When we think of metals, we think of pots, pans, cars, hammers, and swords, all very solid and hard objects. But there's one metal that is a liquid at room temperature, mercury. With a melting point of negative 39 degrees Celsius, mercury is used in thermometers, fluorescent lamps, electronics, in power plants, coal combustion, as well as many other things. But because of this, it's also released as a byproduct, and it's found its way in tuna and other fish. While the amount of mercury in a standard serving of tuna is in the micrograms, if someone were to eat a lot of tuna, they'll be indirectly drinking a lot of mercury. Which made me think, how many cans of tuna would you need to eat to drink a pint of mercury? But first, why is there mercury in tuna? The amount of mercury found in tuna depends on the species. In this chart released by the Food and Drug Administration, light canned tuna has almost six times less mercury than fresh or frozen big eye tuna. If we visualize what these tuna look like, we see a pattern that the biggest species of tuna have more mercury per the equivalent weight. This is because the bigger the fish, the longer it lives and the more it eats. Larger fish species that are higher up in the food chain bioaccumulate more mercury than those lower on the food chain. For example, a species on top of the food chain, such as the shark, has a mercury concentration mean of 0.995 parts per million while a smaller fish, lower on the food chain, like a sardine, only has 0.013. The US Environmental Protection Agency states that 0.045 micrograms of mercury per pound of body weight per day is the maximum safe dose of mercury. Using this guideline, for the average man in the United States of 199.7 pounds, they will have a daily maximum safe dose of roughly 9.06 micrograms of mercury. And for the average American woman of 170.9 pounds, they will have a daily maximum safe dose of roughly 7.75 micrograms of mercury. This means that for the average person eating a small can of light canned tuna would already be above the daily recommended maximum dose. So it's safe to say that it will be bad to drink a pint of mercury. But we all know beer is also bad, and we still drink that. So pick your poison. In life, you get to choose your regrets. But let's go back to the question of extracting a pint of mercury from tuna cans. If we only isolate the mercury from one small tuna can, the small quantity of 10.71 micrograms would be very difficult to even see to the naked eye and wouldn't be enough to fill a pint. So for us to determine how many cans of tuna would need, we'll first need to calculate the weight of mercury needed for one pint. Mercury has a density of 13.5 grams per milliliter. 13.5 times denser than water. One pint is roughly 568 milliliters. So by multiplying mercury's density of 13.5 with 568 milliliters, we'll know that a pint of mercury will weigh 7.668 kilograms. Better use two hands to hold the pint glass up. Now that we know the weight of a pint of mercury, we can divide it by the amount of mercury in a can of tuna. The outcome is a total of 715,966,387 cans of tuna for a pint of mercury. Considering that in the United States alone, Americans eat about 1 billion pounds of canned and pouched tuna a year, globally, as a collective, we're downing a pint of mercury every so often. Cheers to that.